So last year was a watershed year for the task of automatic image colorization. Several simultaneous methods proposed by Izuka, Larson, and ourselves showed surprisingly good results on the task using deep networks. The idea is to take a deep network trained on millions of images to directly map from the grayscale image to the color information. We can then concatenate the input and output and hopefully achieve a plausible colorization of the input grayscale image. Here's one example of colorizing an Ansel Adams photograph using our method. But these methods don't always work. In this case, we see um, large spatial inconsistencies. Automatic methods can make mistakes. But there's an even more fundamental issue at play here. While the automatic method can make very reasonable guesses on such as the mother's skin here, when we look at the mother's shirt, it can, it's completely ambiguous. It can take on one of many different colors. And furthermore, if we look at the baby's um, blanket as well as the children's shirts, they can all take on different colors. So this is actually a very large space, even combinatoric. Our result only, can only choose one of these colorizations. And interestingly, actually, if we look at the results from different methods, they choose something very similar. In the end, this is perhaps not what the user wanted. We develop a real-time interactive system which allows a novice user to choose what they want and efficiently navigate this space. Of course, the graphics community has a long history of user-driven colorization approaches. They generally fall under two camps. Number one is a global-based approach. Typically, a um, exemplar image or a color palette is used to colorize an input grayscale image. The second offers more local control or is stroke based. Now, our work supports both these different types of interactions, but for now, let's focus on the second. In SIGGRAPH 2004, Levin et al. proposed seminal work called Colorization Using Optimization. There, a user could draw color strokes on top of a grayscale image. The unknown pixel colors are then defined to be a linear combination of their neighboring pixel colors. The weighting of this linear combination is determined by some sort of low-level similarity metric. The method then solves a linear system to produce the full output colorization. And now this system can provide very good colorizations given the user good user edits, as we've seen in this example. However, we do notice that the method requires many user points, as many as 80, for example, uh, in the image shown. And the reason for this is that the method has no knowledge of natural image priors. And this manifests itself in two different ways. Number one, in regions with low uncertainty, such as vegetation, the user still has to go in and specify explicitly the color. And number two, when the user does specify color, the way that the edit propagation rule um, is written is actually hand defined based on some sort of low level feature. So perhaps the edit propagation is not done as efficiently as possible. We'd like to use the power of deep networks, but also we'd like to support um, user interaction as well. In the absence of user edits, we'd like to be able to make educated guesses as to the color of a given region based on natural image priors. And in the presence of user edits, we'd like to be able to propagate them not only based on low-level textures, but also mid to high-level semantics. Here we give a simple demonstration of the interface that we've developed. On the left, we have a grayscale image, on the right, we have an initial colorization. You can see on this cup, the network first predicts a red cup. But what if a user wanted a blue cup? They can go in, at a single control point, make it blue. Conditioned on the grayscale image, as well as the user point, the, we provide an interactive colorization that has a blue cup. And we can see that this input point has been successfully propagated to the whole cup, even across the stripes. However, we see this undesirable shadowing artifact. So to remove this, the user can go in and add another point within the brim of the cup. And now, this undesired artifact has been removed. In addition, we provide a data-driven color palette. This allows the user to quickly explore different modes uh, for this cup by changing the first point that they laid down. And if they don't see a color that they like, they can go to the continuous color gamut on the upper left and select their desired color. Now, in automatic colorization, a network aims to directly map a grayscale image to a predicted colorization, so from X to Y. What we'd like to do is also incorporate user points, such as these. To do this, we directly input the user points into the network in addition to the grayscale image. Now, training an automatic image colorization technique can be seen kind of as a classic supervised learning problem. 
we can gather many train, um, training XY pairs, in this case, grayscale and color images. We can then look at our current predicted colorization, F of X, the ground truth colorization, Y, the loss or distance between the two, and we can adjust our network parameters to minimize this loss. For a user guided approach, we can simply add uh, another input to our system. So this, at first glance, seems very easy. We should just be done, right? However, there's really a major, major problem here, and that's the presence of the data. Whereas it's very simple to download millions of images and break them up into their grayscale and color components to get X and Y, obtaining millions of user interactions is likely to be expensive. And there's really a more nefarious problem at play here. That is, the user interaction is going to actually be dependent on the system, and the system itself needs to be trained on the user data. We have a chicken and egg problem. And this is something we need to bypass. We do this by randomly simulating user interactions. That is, we take the ground truth color Y, we randomly reveal points, and feed that to the network F. We can view these randomly revealed points as hints the that the network is able to use to try to guess at the rest of the colorization. Some example simulated user points are shown here for our cup. The number of points we have is drawn from a geometric distribution. What this means is that with some probability P, in this case one eighth, the network has to perform completely automatic colorization. It does not get the benefit of seeing any user points. The vast majority of the time, however, it gets to see at least a few points. And a small percentage of the time, it actually gets to see many, many points. So it has to operate in this regime as well. Now there's still likely to be some sort of gap between how users actually use the system and these random simulated, randomly simulated points. But actually randomly simulating points um, provided us a um, effective system. Perhaps this indicates that the workspace here is low dimensional enough that randomly simulating the points actually adequately covers it. In the end, our network learns how to integrate these hints in a learnable end-to-end -end framework. And this means that it can use anything it wants, from low-level texture features to mid to high-level semantic concepts. Whatever it needs to help solve the task as determined by the data. Now here's a quick glance at our network architecture. There's nothing too special here. We follow current best practices, so we'll refer you to our paper for additional details. We train the ImageNet database and fine tune some of the layers from our previous work in ECCV 2016. To begin, we test our system qualitatively on some legacy black and white photos. So here's an amateur family photograph of my grandparents taken from 1949. You can see that using our interface, we can quickly toggle through different background colors as well as different shirt colors for my grandma's shirt. With some more points, we might get something. We also tried this iconic photograph of Albert Einstein, and with a few clicks, we can give him a nice pink tongue. This is an image from Ansel Adams, and of course we claim no artistic improvements, but this is our result. And finally, this is Muhammad Ali. Thanks, Thanks Richard. So Richard just presented a few encouraging visual results, but how well does the system work in general? Uh, for that, we evaluate our method on 1,000 holdout text images. Uh, we randomly reveal uh, ground truth points and see if the algorithm can reconstruct ground truth images. So here's the plot. The x-axis shows the number of points which measuring the amount of interaction. The y-axis uh, shows, shows, uh, reports the quality of the results measured by the PSNR. So for the automatic methods, it takes zero points. For the interactive ones, it takes one point to 500 points in our experiment. So a simple baseline uh, which, pre which predicts gray for every single pixel achieves about 23 PSNR. Use of points, our method can perform automatic colorization. For example, it knows that Christmas socks might be red and produce a higher PSNR of around 24.5. So we then added the random use of inputs uh, with ground truth color, which we show on a log scale. So let's look at the, the Levin baseline. As we reveal more points, we see increasing PSNR. Our system also shares this desirable feature, and in the fast to uh, medium interaction regime, like five points, 10 points, 50 points, our method performs better. But uh, 
500 points, uh, these two curves intersect. Uh, this actually makes sense because given 500 points, uh, the high level knowledge from the natural image prior is not uh, important and some low level propagation law might work as well. So in addition we show a few uh, recent methods like in published in 2016 uh, which our system also outperforms. So all these three, three baseline methods do not have access to the natural image prior as we have in our method. So, so far we have shown that given the correct colors, our algorithm can propagate the color effectively. But in practice, what we observe is that it's very often hard for users to pick up the correct color. So how can we guide a user uh, to picking up the possible color? Uh, here we propose a data-driven approach as well based on the predicted color distribution. So here we suggest common colors like different blues for the sky, a variety of greens for the so color is, the color skin color is of, often very hard to pick. So we also provide a few choice as well as for closing. So here we show that the uh, image of a pilot uh, looking at this particular user point uh, and the system provides these suggested colors. So as the user clicks on each suggested color, the output colorization will change accordingly. So let's see how it works. So recall that our main system uh, predicts a single colorization for every single pixel. So on the side, we add a side network to predict a distribution over pixel values. So when the user uh, selects a particular point, we find the corresponding color histogram and run some mode seeking algorithm based on k-means and then we present the most popular clusters, centers to the users. So to evaluate our recommendation system, as well as our interface, we run a user study with novice users given minimum training. So the users were told to create realistic colorizations uh, given one minute per, Im per image. And then uh, we show the images to the mechanical turker and as, as well as the ground truth images and ask which one is real, which one is fake. So here, so a perfect colorization algorithm she should produce 50% full enrich. And our method without user points can fool the turkers 90% uh, of the time. So with just a single minute of use uh, with our interface, the, the, the results can fool the turkers 27% of the time uh, without, without the recommendation system. So with our color recommendation system, it, it can further uh, fool the turkers 30% of the time. Which, which indicates that the recommendation system might help uh, further produce better results. So let's see an example uh, from the user study. So the automatic results is uncertain. So the novice user added two points, uh, which fill in the rest of the orange. Let's see a bit before and after comparison. And we also uh, show the results generated by Levin et al. system with the same user inputs. But sometimes users just want to go out and our system is happy to follow their intention. So we can also change the color for the actor Mark Raffles face. There are a few color choice. Maybe the green works best for him. So instead of uh, local color hints, we can also provide other kinds of uh, user hints like a Global histogram. Uh, this is implemented in the same way. We simply feed the desired color histogram to the network as input. So here the bird is colorized using the color histogram from the smaller reference images in the corner. And here are the results. So this is another way for you to quickly go through diverse possible colorizations. So here is another example. Here are the colorful results given different kinds of reference images. So notice that the algorithm different colors of this cute lolly kit to different objects. So of course, algorithm makes a mistake and our system is no exception. So here we show a, a failure case from our user study. So the novice user tried to make the jeans blue, but the blue 
the color blue is propagated to the background as well, demonstrate undesired non-local effect. So the algorithm simply uh, propagates the color too much. So here is the opposite case where the algorithm propagates too little. So a novice user has a point on the road, but the blue color may propagate to the other side of the road. So it's still an open problem and it's very hard to determine uh, how much you should propagate. So for the global transfer, our method sometimes uh, produce less satisfactory results if the reference image's color do not fit the input image. So in conclusion, we have developed a deep learning based method which can map a grayscale image along the user hints into output colorization. So the system is learned in an end to end manner. We see this work as part of a larger trend of deep learning based methods integrated with user interaction. For example, in the application of interactive segmentation or like sketched photo. So, so, so please try our code on your own images or your advisor's faces and uh, please visit the website for, for more information and comprehensive results. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, please come to the mic for uh, questions. Um, do you think that uh, other input modalities might help with uh, some of the um, multimodal issues? So I'm thinking like natural language to say, just tell the system, make the person's skin green, and then you don't have to figure out which parts are, are relevant. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds really interesting. Um, yeah, we played with just these local hints and these global histograms. It's really, I think, just scratching the surface um, in, that, in that case. So we could have a lot more different types of interactions as well. Hi. Hi. Other questions? Yes, um, oh. I have a question. Um, this is just beautiful work. Oh, um, thank you. I wanted to ask, did you look at more modern photographic methods, things that are on higher in uh, photography paper? because your style is, has a vintage nature to it. And I just wondered if you had looked at, um, you know, like, kind of like a, the neon f effect that people can do in color photography, and the, uh, some certain cinema, cine, cinematic um, colorization methods in your um, approach. It didn't look like you had that, but you know, like some of the production sessions here have a more cinematic, richer color map to them. I, I see. didn't know if you had considered that or planned to consider that. Okay, that's, yeah, that's really interesting. Um, yeah, we hadn't considered that. In this case, we were training on the ImageNet database, which is a um, public data set with a million images, but uh, it would be interesting to try different kind of image styles as well. Um, you could maybe vary the, the training set and see if that gives kind of different types of results. There is an ACES color standard that's being discussed here, and it has a whole map of, you know, how they are producing film and film, uh -huh. a color mapping. Just thought it might be interesting. Okay, cool. Thank you. Anything else? Great, thank you. All right, thank you.